I know it looks bad. I'm gonna shave it. The only reason I haven't shaved it yet is because I have a pimple underneath. It's a genius strategy I came up with. It's a pimple blocking mustache. But let's talk about what we're here to talk about today, which is some huge gaming drama. And for once, it's not on the esports side of things, which is going horribly per usual. But it's about the much more interesting side of gaming, the side that makes money, game development. And there's one company in particular seeing all the money be made, and they want a little piece of it. And that company is Unity who tweeted out today that they made a change to their business model, which includes new additions to our subscription plans and the introduction of a runtime fee, to which I read this morning and thought to myself, what the hell's a runtime fee, and moved on with my day, until I saw the claws come out from Jeff Keighley, who dropped a what a joke period in response. This is a scathing response from a normally well-mannered man. So I thought to myself, what's going on? Why is the social media manager copy and pasting the phrase fraud detection? It seems like we've got a mystery on our hands, Scoobs. And so we have to start at the beginning. What is Unity? And to clear that up, well, it is a game engine. It's a place where you make video games. And, and different developers use it to make games that you recognize, like Fall Guys, or Cuphead, or Hollow Knight, or any of the games on this list, which are all amazing games. Okay, how does Unity make money? Or how did Unity make most of their money? Well, through a subscription service. Uh, you basically sign up monthly or yearly. There's different plans for an enterprise or an individual. There's even a free plan. Uh, and, and that's kind of how you get hooked. And they even increased the price of their plan last year almost to the day. September 13th, 2022. So they were trying to make a little bit more money. But recently, as they tweeted out, they want to make money in a new way. And this new way is the runtime fee. And in it, they say, as many of you know, the Unity engine is in fact two substantial software components, the Unity editor, uh, editor and the Unity runtime. Uh, Unity runtime is code that executes on player devices and makes made with Unity games work at scale with billions of monthly downloads. So basically, anytime you buy a game and then you go to install the game, you're also installing the Unity runtime. And this is the end of where I will explain what it is. Just know that you use it every time you use a Unity game and you, you need to be using it. And Unity also needs to be updating it so it works with different computers and, and uh, OSs and w whatever the hell. Okay? And I'm not going to try to explain any further because I'm dumb and you're going to make fun of me in the comments. It's what's going to happen. Let's make it simple. Every time you play a Unity game, you must run the runtime software. Unity has to keep developing this software to work on every single PC or console or whatever, so they're hoping to make a little extra money. They're also corporations, so of course they want to make extra money. And how are they trying to get it? By charging developers per install. Now, there's some additional rules and caveats, like thresholds of who they're actually trying to target, which is usually larger developers, and how much they're willing to take, which scales lower and lower the bigger your game is. But at its core, that's the big shift, which is a huge shift because they went from a subscription-based model where there's a flat fee the developers knows they're going to pay to a scalable model where now big games are going to have to pay a lot more money. And it doesn't even have to be that big to start paying a huge chunk. Here's an example from Unity's website directly. I don't even have to make up the numbers. They did it for us. In this example, we have a game that made $2 million in the past year and had 5 million installs, which surpasses both thresholds. If they were to have 200,000 installs from standard fee countries and 100,000 installs from emerging market fee countries, they would owe $23,500 in just one month. If that keeps going for a year, they would owe $282,000 or 14% of this $2 million revenue number that they posted, which is insane. 14% of all of the money you make is high. It is much higher than a, a, a company like Unreal Engine, a competitor who charges a 5% license fee and does a revenue share system. And it doesn't just impact big devs. It also impacts some smaller indie creators, like one you might recognize, Danny who tweeted out a meme here, because obviously no fees are retroactive. Oh shit, I guess I owe Unity $5.6 million, because uh, he made Muck and Crab Game, which were huge games, 28 million downloads. And he used the Unity personal pricing, which was 20 cent per install, but even if you use the Unity enterprise pricing, that would still be like $280,000 owed. And again, to be clear, this does not charge a developer who hasn't made at least a million dollars with their game, but it does set some scary precedents. Specifically, this meme. 
Unity is making this real. Pirate game. Delete it and download it again nine more times. Company loses $600. Is this becoming true now? Can there be campaigns to reinstall games? And those were answered in a Q&A by some people at Unity. How are you going to collect install data? Well, we leverage our own proprietary data model, which gives us, we think, an accurate determination of the number of times the runtime is distributed. Basically, tr trust us, bro. Okay. Well, what about reinstalls or re-downloads? Would that count as multiple installs? Yes. The creator would need to pay full for all future installs. Okay. What about a demo? Like you release a game that costs money and then you release a demo and they have to install that demo, which also uses the runtime software. And it's like, mostly no, but sometimes maybe. All right. What about pirated games? People who illegally download the game, but they're still running the runtime software because they have to do it to play the game. Well, again, trust us, bro. We have fraud detection practices. Basically, there is a lot of reliance on Unity, which is tough to trust right now because they can't even get their message out clearly. You remember how I just told you that they would be charging for multiple installs? Well, they walked that back today. Apparently, they're only going to charge for one installation of a game. But how do they track that? Are they able to track my multiple computers or multiple devices? What if I do it on, on, on console or, or PC or Steam Deck? I, it seems like there's going to be a lot of holes. And this has scared devs shitless. It has led to the least productive day in game development history. Here's one of the creators of Among Us talking about how they're thinking about how they would port the game away from Unity to a competitor like Godot rather than actually paying these fees because it would be cheaper to just do that. Here's Massive Monster saying, hey, we made Cult of Lamb. We like making games. We like using Unity. This shit sucks. We're going to stop using Unity. Here's Agro Crab also signing up saying, hey, we have a game going to Game Pass. Can we actually trust Unity to track effectively people installing in Game Pass versus on their own personal computers? This is all very scary. Even publishers like Developer Digital are talking about perhaps not publishing games if they're using certain engines. They're being somewhat coy about this, but it's pretty clear people are trying to stay away from Unity now. If this decision goes through, it's going to impact everyone, including you. It's going to totally change the timelines for games that are currently in the pipeline. Games that had a few months of work are now going to be scrapped and have to be remade in a different engine. We might never see Hollow Knight Silk Song. But on the other hand, I get what Unity's trying to do. They want to make money, cover their costs, make a surplus by charging the big guys. They don't want to blanket punish everybody using Unity by increasing subscription prices year over year. They want to start targeting the people that have a shit ton of downloads. People that use Unity like Pokemon Go, Genshin Impact, Honkai Star Rail, Raid Shadow Legends. These companies are getting millions and millions and millions of downloads and they are getting charged the same amount as an indie dev. So in a way, yes, they should maybe be charged more. That to me makes sense, but it also only works if your customers trust you and nobody trusts Unity right now. There's way too much reliance on them for the fraud detection to make sure developers aren't getting scammed by unhappy customers or to make sure that they're actually able to tell when someone's installing at Game Pass versus installing on their own personal PC. And how are they really able to tell if it's multiple installs or one install? So I think they should go back to the drawing board, plan this up a little bit better, stop changing the plan the same day you announce it, and then have a release sometime later on. Anyway, that's it. That's your game drama. Have, have a good one. See you later. Goodbye. See you later. Have a good one. Goodbye. You know, goodbye. Whew. Tough to be a game dev right now.